Yo, what's going on guys? This is Bunny Muffins. Uh, new game on PBE today. Uh, there's this build that I've been wanting to try. It is a comp back from set 2 and set 3. And the name's a little inappropriate, but it revolves around Yasuo, if you guys remember what that was. And he pretty much is Master Yi from like set 3, so... We'll have to see how it actually plays out. Um, but if you read his ability, I'll put it up here, he gains, like, he does a big attack, and then he gains attack damage afterwards, so... Not as quite as good as Master Yi in set 3, but it's still gonna be pretty nice. We're gonna see if we can try to make it work. And I have tried, like, a couple of games of this already. I haven't quite found the final build yet, but hopefully we will do that soon. If you guys want to get, like, updated builds on set 5 once it comes out, and it comes out on the... 28th, I believe. Uh, you guys can head on over to my website at bunnymuffins.lol and I have a tier list there and I have everything you could possibly want. Uh, but we were going to slam the hand of justice here and that's just like when you get a tier and a crit, it's just a solid item to build anytime. So that's why I do that here. So we won the first fight and here's like a weird thing. There's like a new. What's it called? It's called the Armory. You get like a bunch of items in the second part of each stage. So 4, 1, or sorry, 2, 2, 3, 2, and 4, 2. And we got Yasuo here, by the way. So we're just going to go ahead and put all the items on him. Hand of Justice, not an ideal item, but uh, it is going to be something you just have to deal with every now and then. So we're not going to get like perfect best in slot Yasuo quite yet. I think the best in slot would be something like RFC, like the regular one, and then Rage Blade. Maybe the evil Rage Blade might be better. And then after that, you get something like maybe an evil Quicksilver or something like uh, another attack speed item. Maybe like a Runons would work. Just note, you cannot build evil Runons on Yasuo because it does not give on hit effects. And he might have an on hit effect. I'm not quite sure yet. I'm going to read it here on my other screen. Uh, yeah, he has like a bonus on hit effect for the rest of combat after he casts his first spell. So yeah, you definitely do not want to build double Runons or evil Runons, but regular Runons does work. Uh, so one thing you want to keep in mind in this comp, Legionnaire, if we read Legionnaire, Legionnaires gain bonus attack speed and their first attack after casting an ability heals them for 50% of the damage dealt. And when you get more Legionnaires, you just get more bonus attack speed. So keep in mind, that's not like that helpful. So I think you only really need two Legionnaire. Uh, his other trait is Nightbringer. So if I read that as well, Nightbringer says... Uh, Nightbringers gain a shield for 8 seconds equal to a percent of their maximum health for the first time they drop below 50%. When this occurs, that Nightbringer gains bonus damage. So after they drop below a certain amount of life, they gain a shield and they gain a lot of damage. And that one scales based on how many Nightbringers you have all the way up to 8. That is pretty interesting. Uh, so we're on the carousel here. I'm going to grab the rod. We could build a Rage Blade with that. We could also build a Morello Nomicon. Uh, so one thing I like to do when I play this comp, you notice how I got the evil BF sword from before. I'm sorry I didn't talk about that before, but Morgana is also a Nightbringer, so that's going to be really useful for you. So when you actually like play the comp, she's a great tank, so you could GA and Morello her. I think she's going to be one of the better tanks for this Yasuo build. So essentially what I think you need is at least two Legionnaire, at least two Nightbringer, and then everything after that, I think it's just whatever you hit. I don't think it matters that much because scaling Nightbringer or scaling Legionnaire doesn't really help you that that much. Like the first two that you get from it, or the first bonus that you get from it is already like super, super good. So I don't think you need to worry that much. With that in mind, if you are able to get it, uh, like by all means, go for like two, four, six, eight Legionnaire and Nightbringer. I'm not going to tell you not to do that, but it just might not be like that, that great. So you could just either run good solid units and we'll figure that out more as the set goes on. Uh, or just run like more Nightbringers and Legionnaires. Like they're both fine. I don't really think it's that much of a hassle to go over right now. Um, and especially since the game's very new, we don't really know. And we got another uh, Yasuo and Riven here, so that's good. Riven's gonna be like his sister in this comp, uh, just because they're both Legionnaires and yeah, they're both sword people. And they kind of were in the same builds before, so that kind of makes sense too. They're in the Blade Master comp in set three if you guys played back then. Um, but for those of you who are on the new set, um, or like if you just started playing in set 4.5, like have no fear, the game's going to be a little confusing in the beginning. Oh, nice. We just, <laughs> we just hit Yasuo 2 star, so that's really nice. Uh, but yeah, the game's going to be super confusing in the beginning, but have no fear because like whenever a new set drops, everyone's going to be confused. So that all like um, super confusion that you're having right now, it's completely fine. So I think I'm going to build like a hat or a Morello with this, as we talked about before. Um, 
not much to do here. We have Yasuo two star. I was gonna roll down and make like at, at next level, get to level six. And some people, they like to roll at level six on stage three, two to get two star units, uh, such as Yasuo, if they're three cost or two cost units. Uh, that's a popular stage to roll down for that. And then that makes it so they don't have to roll as much on stage four, one. And I'll be coming out with a leveling guide later once a set comes out. So if you guys are confused about like, when do I level, when do I roll? Like definitely look out for that in the future. Um, Cause I'll probably release that within the first couple of weeks. All right, so here we get another armory. I'm gonna grab the bow because I mean, we have the item now, right? So that's gonna be completely optimal uh, because you need the bonus range. And then we'll level up here because it only costs us one interest gold. And then we'll just put a random unit in since I don't see, okay, never mind. We could do Kled for Cavalier. We haven't seen many Nightbringers in our shop. I think Nightbringer, stacking Nightbringer is better than stacking Legionnaire uh, just because it is, I think it just does more. Legionnaire just gives more attack speed, which is fine, but Nightbringer gives a shield and damage, so I think that's more useful. Um, but I think both are fine, but we just haven't seen others in the shop. That's why we're running this random Kled just to give Cavalier to our Sejuani. All right, we got Lee Sin here. He's pretty good. He's a Nightbringer as well. Uh, I, can we fit him in right now? I don't think so. I guess we could play it over Sedge, but then we lose the Cavalier bonus. So I think we just keep our team as is. Right, I'm going to grab the rod off of Carousel, uh, just because, again, Morello. I don't like any of these items. I'd much prefer to build, like, a Zeke's Herald with my items or get a Chain Vest to build the Evil Guardian Angel. Evil Guardian Angel is probably one of the best items on Morgana, in my opinion. Uh, so there's uh, Callista. I'll pick that up. And I'll just drop in this Mordekaiser. He's a Legionnaire, but we kind of only have five. But he's a four-cost unit, so I'll just play him for now. I don't think that's that big of an issue. I don't think I had anything that much better to play on this turn. Um, but I'm probably going to do like a Legionnaire build in the meantime until I get something better. Uh, but that's what's good about this comp, I guess, or what's good about this set. You don't need to get like exactly five or six of a certain synergy anymore. Uh, it's actually pretty flexible. Are we going to lose our lose streak or our win streak? Okay, one auto off. That was actually pretty close. I'm surprised we lost. We This guy's level five and we're level seven and we've been beating everyone. But, you know, sometimes that happens. We probably got lucky in some other fights, too. Um, so, I guess nothing to buy in the shop. Yeah. Oh, just a random note. Anyone else get, like, really confused in their shops because I just can't recognize any unit and it's just so, so diff... Oh, wait, Vladimir's a Nightbringer, so I could play her for six Nightbringer. Take out, I think... Yeah, Kled. Uh, so now we have four Legionnaire and four Nightbringer. That's kind of cool. So we'll just sell everyone there. Uh, that should give more bonuses to Yasuo, which is ideally the unit we're buffing. But it's kind of like, yeah, once a new set comes, it's like you don't recognize any of the portraits. Super confusing, but you get used to it in time. I played through like four sets now, or I played since set one since release. So I have been used to kind of getting used to new pictures and portraits, and it is always daunting in the beginning. A lot of people complain in the beginning about like, oh, I can't see anything. But honestly, this happens every set, so hopefully we'll get used to it after like a week or two. Okay, nice. We got a Sejuani 2. The question is, do I want this Tarek? Uh, Tarek's a good unit. Because I'm thinking just running solid units instead of running like too many Legionnaires and Nightbringers, as I said before. So we got a Zeke's Herald off this camp. Uh, so we're going to probably build that. We'll probably... Uh, do we roll at level 7? So what I want to do is something called a slow roll. I want to get Yasuo 3 star. But uh, let's reposition first for the Zeeks. I'll just put it on Callista for now. Uh, just because I can't think of anyone else to put it on yet. Um, but what was I saying before? Oh yeah, we were talking about re-rolling. Uh, so normally when you go for a 3 star, you need to decide what level you need to roll at for that unit. And part for 3 costs in particular, you either do that at level 7 or level 8. And... Normally you do it to level 8 if you have a lot of health like we do now. You can see we have 97 health on the top right corner. Uh, but if you have low health, you have to do it on 7 sometimes. And it just depends on the game you have. And I think this time we're going to do it on level 8. And the reason why you want to do it on level 8... Uh, let's do this first. Uh, so I'm going to take the Chain Vest because that is the evil Guardian Angel we were talking about before. So I think that just makes the most sense here. Um, so yeah, we'll take that. But yeah, when you roll on level 8, you get a 35% chance to get 3 costs. Let's pick up this Vladimir. And that just is the highest chance to get 3 costs in like 
for everything. Um, I don't know else to say it. They're just roll odds. You could see it on the right above the shop. Um, but at level 7, it's only 30%. So sometimes you have to roll on level 7 and get slightly lower odds to get the 3 cost units. Uh, but if you're able to greed all the way to level 8, such as in this game when we're very healthy, it is well worth it because the odds are a lot higher. So it's much easier to hit certain units. So yeah, I just spent all my excess gold above 50 to, into my level up. And then I never want to go below 50 because I want to keep getting 5 interest every turn. Um, but what team is this guy running? I'm always in, He's running some sort of forgotten build. Um... Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting build. I haven't tried it quite too much yet. I know there's like a reroll forgotten build. And also, again, I'll be coming out with all sorts of comps uh, once the set comes out officially. They're just making too many changes right now. They're changing the game like every single day right now. So there's just there's just too many changes to make a tier list. I'm not sure how else to put that. Um, but here, nothing in our shop. So we could just level up and, not level up, but put our excess gold into experience and then just go from there. Actually, well, Morgana right there. So we could drop the GA on her and we actually have the Morellos too. And our team's looking a little awkward right now. I need to take, because we, we, I almost ran five Legionnaire, three Nightbringer, but I really want to put the GA on Morgana. So I'm not really too sure how to do that. I will figure that out next round because uh, we'll probably just sell Mordekaiser and put someone else in. Uh, but what's this guy running? He's running the Ziggs Hellion reroll. So you can see a bunch of one cost units on his bench. He's got more Ziggs and Poppies on his bench. I've been trying the Hellion reroll. Not much luck with it. It was much better yesterday before they nerfed it today. And again, that just goes to show like how difficult it is to kind of um, give like tier lists and guides for the game right now in its current state. And that's just because they're making changes every day. So uh, if I make a guide, there's really not much value because one, you're playing on PBE, so the rank doesn't even matter. And two, you just like, it's not going to be relevant for like more than a day. Uh, but once the set comes out in two weeks, I will definitely be writing a lot of guides for this. Uh, so for the items here, we wanted a sword to build a Zeke's Herald, but we don't quite get that. Uh, so what do we actually want? Uh, maybe a Negatron? I don't know. Okay, we weren't able to pick our item. I was too slow. We got a belt. It's whatever. At least it's a high cost belt. Uh, both those items are kind of trash, so it honestly doesn't really affect us that much. Um, but we should probably level up here, right? I'll sell Mordekaiser, put in Vladimir. We have six Nightbringer now. That's good. And then we need a Zeke someone. I'll do it on Riven. Um, maybe I should have done it on Diana because Diana can go in the second row because right now Riven's kind of blocked. But we'll put a Morello on Morgana because that's just a solid item on her. And we have a bunch... Uh, like, we have the components already, so I'm not going to greed them too, too much. So what's this guy running? He's running Kale already. Oh, yeah. Kale is a great late-game champion. She's probably one of the best because fights in this set, I found, last incredibly long. So Kale gets stronger every couple of seconds, and she just demolishes teams after a certain point. She, like, 1v9s them because she just does a huge AoE damage that like heals her or something like that too. I, I don't even know. I don't know if it's an item healing her or if it's the ability healing her. She's just doing like a ton of work. And so whenever a fight goes to like 30 seconds or 40 seconds or even overtime, she will like 1v9 your entire team. It's absolutely nuts. Uh, so there's a ribbon. We'll, we'll pick that. So I noticed that the portraits change. Well, not I didn't notice. They like announced it as well. And things glow whenever you own the unit. So once you buy the first unit, Rolling through your shop's really easy because you'll just see... Let's just pick up Teemo here because we're at 97 health. Why not? Um, but you'll see that champions will glow and that means you own that champion and it just means that you can... Like, it's just a signal to buy it. It makes it... It's kind of like a nice improvement. Uh, the only thing I find annoying is that after you get a two-star of a unit, they keep showing them in the shop as glowing. So you might get tricked out there. Uh, obviously, it's useful to have that indicator if you are going for three-star units, but uh, that doesn't happen that often, in my opinion. So it is a little weird in some sense, but overall, I think it is a nice change. All right, so after Raptors, we got a Spatula and a Negatron. Let's see what this builds. Dawnbringer. Uh, I think that's just a wasted Spatula. Okay, so the bunch of legendaries in our shop. Let's just buy them. I think I'm just going to do like Yasuo plus a bunch of legendary teams. Because that'd just be pretty fun just to see if I could get them. And we are level 8, so we're going to start rolling for this Yasuo. I need to make room for some things. I don't really know who to sell. I think I do want to play some of these legendaries. Uh, 
I'll put in Teemo and Ivern for Invoker. I don't know if Invoker actually does too much. Yasuo does have a bunch of attack speed, so it should be pretty helpful on him. Uh, I, I messed up my Zeke's this turn, but I'll drop it on Kale because I think she's just pretty good with attack speed. And then I need to build Zephyr on someone. Uh, so what's this guy doing? He is some sort of like caster build. I don't. I don't really know. Um, I have trouble recognizing all the champions, so do, do, I do apologize for that. I wish I did know everything off the back of my head, but I honestly haven't like played too much. I play like maybe one or two hours every day. I am actually streamed my other games, so today I played off stream because I was like a little too tired. But yeah, new shop. Let's just roll down again. I also need to reposition my Yasuo to get hit by the Zeeks. Not really too sure which row is better. They changed RFC so the range is less, but I don't want my Kale in the second row either because that's kind of bad as well. Yeah, let's do the roll down here. Nothing there. Uh, there's a Darius. Darius a, is a Nightbringer, so I definitely want to play him. And he's a God King, so that's pretty nice. I could pair him with Taric later. And then I'll just drop this Zephyr on Lulu probably, uh, almost no matter what. Oh, that's a very good Zephyr target. That's a huge Ziggs. Uh, so we should win this one. Morgana went off, which is nice. He Moreloed pretty much the whole team. Um, okay, we, there's another Morgana there, and nothing else in the shop. Oh wait, actually, this guy is pretty strong. I don't think we're winning. The Ziggs came back, and he he came back with a vengeance. He's got spell crit, so yeah, he just one-shot us. Oh no. Oh no, Teemo almost had a 1v1 interaction, but I forgot about the Hellion buff. Like, not the Hellion buff, the Hellion trait where it just sends people to you. A little, a little awkward, a little weird, but you know, whatever, it happens. A new shop. We get a Yasuo there. That's nice. I'm going to keep rolling. I want to buy all the legendaries, so I'm going to sell maybe Lulu, recycle the Zephyr, and then get this Viego out. Uh, Viego's not actually good, but I just want to buy legendaries. Can't get the Garen, so I'm skipping that. We got Taric. That's nice. That's great to pair with the... What's his name? The Darius. But I guess I take out Ivern over the Lee Sin. Mm, oh, there's Morgana 2. That's a pretty big upgrade. You want Morgana 2 sometime in stage 4, but we didn't roll that whole time, so uh, we don't deserve to get it, you know? If you don't roll for something, you don't deserve to get it. Uh, but we had a pretty strong team. We have high health. We have 84 health still, so we didn't really have a need to roll down. That's why we didn't do it back then. Uh, but this is a pretty scary Hecarim, in my opinion. He's got Dragon Claw, which is pretty nice, because Yasuo does both magic and physical damage. So it is a little weird in that sense. All right, so I'm going to get a Shroud of Stillness here, just because all the other items kind of sucked. It's not my favorite, but like, well, it is my favorite item in the late game, but I don't want to build Shroud on PBE. But let's keep rolling. We see a Darius and a Yasuo there, so we need to sell someone else. I guess sell Ivern. We don't need him anymore. Um, Karma's probably better than Ivern, right? I, I don't really know um, in our team comp. So there's Yasuo two-star. Nothing here. Nothing here. Oh, there's Karma, so we could play her for Invoker with Teemo. Um, Diego's not doing anything, anything, so I'll take him out there. I'll Shroud the Lee Sin because I know I'm going to sell Lee Sin because uh, I'm probably going to drop down to two Nightbringers to play more random legendaries. Uh, but we really need Kale too. I think she is just the strongest legendary in this team comp because I have a Guardian Angel, so the fight's guaranteed to last long, and she just will scale infinitely. It's actually kind of scary. This guy's got Ash 3. That's also pretty scary. Um... Okay, but you'll see here, like, Kale, look at that attack. It looks insane, right? She almost did it. She's only level 1 and doesn't have good items, so if she had good items, and if she was level 2, she would definitely destroy them. Uh, new shop here. I guess we just chill. We don't have to roll. We'll probably roll after an, on stage 6-1. Alright, so we are rolling down here. I sold all my other guys, uh, but let's see what we hit. There's a Kale. Uh, oh, there's Darius too. That's nice. Uh, we hit nothing else, though. Oh, there's Volibear. Oh, we already have Volibear. Uh, Garen, we can't use. We really need Yasuos. We rolled a lot of gold. We did not hit many Yasuos. That's our main... That's the main guy we want to, so it's a little awkward. I'll GA the Volibear because he CCs a lot. I'll just put items randomly. Um, I don't I don't know, man. Like, yeah, just drop the items because I just want to get value out of them. I just realized Morgana doesn't use Morello at all because they changed the champion. I thought it was like the recent Morgana, not the new one. And I don't think she's applying Morello Namicon to anyone. Because he's not doing magic damage. Morello only works on magic damage. There's another Yasuo, which is nice. Um, hmm. Game's looking a little weird right now. 
All right, I'm just gonna roll to zero because people are pretty strong at this point and not having this Yasuo is gonna be pretty awkward. I might need to sell this Kale though because I need to get Morello off of her because it's kind of a waste of an item in my opinion if I don't hit her. Uh, there's one Yasuo, so we'll roll to zero now because we just need one more. Uh, I'm rolling a little slowly right now, but it's just, okay, there there it is. Um, oh, we, we already have Viego too, so I'll sell him. Get the Yasuo three star, so there is that. He will be banging, so now we Zephyr someone, doesn't matter who, and let's see how, how well he does. I mean, he carried us really far just as a two star, so I'd imagine as a three star it should be like no contest, right? Um, that's my thoughts, at least. This is a guy that beat us before. We zephyred his Ziggs that other fight, but he was able to pull it off still. But not anymore. We have three-star Yasuo, and that should be enough. We also have, like, two-star Volibear, Viego, and Darius, so I, I think that helps, too. Um, but yeah, Kale's doing no damage. You can see the true damage. The true damage is from her ability, not from the Morello. So I just need a seller completely. Um, like, let's read it here. First attack deals 70% of Kale's attack damage is bonus true damage. So that's where the true damage is coming from. Not from the Morello, it's from her ability. All right, so now we're facing a ghost. We missed the shroud, but that's okay. I'm not trying to like hit every shroud. Um, I guess I'll reposition next turn or something like that. Uh, but I wasn't really scouting too much. Ooh, Velkaz is a pretty cool champion. I want to try him out. But oh, he's got Kale too. So I guess he wins because Kale 2 is the most broken unit ever. Um... Because look at that, she just throws like 50 billion knives somewhere and it's like, how are you supposed to compete against that? I don't know. Wait, we actually almost won. How did my Yasuo die? Okay, so there goes the win streak. Uh, a little unfortunate. Oh, it's a 1v1 scenario now. It's me versus a Kale guy. Uh, what item do we want here? Probably Dragon Claw, because he deals magic damage. But he took Dragon Claw. Yeah, look, look at that damage chart, it's all magic. I guess it's QSS or Frozen Heart. Oh, we're, we're not able to pick an item. Unlucky. We got a Bloodthirster. All right, that's my bad. That's my bad. I guess I just drop it on Kale because she attacks a lot. I have no clue. But man. All right, we got... Okay, so in this new fight, Yasuo... Ooh, I need a reposition for Velkaz because Velkaz is hitting my whole team. I feel like if we rolled damage on Yasuo last time, if we roll healing, it'll be a lot better. Um, oh, we got Syndra. Syndra threw my Yasuo to the back line. Syndra's another really cool champion. Uh, she just throws people to the back line, and it's just really fun to see. Uh, so if you are facing a lot of assassins, she's probably really good to put into your team. Uh, but yeah, we rolled healing that time. I think that's all we need to win. So we rolled healing again, so that's nice. By the way, I'm saying rolled healing as in uh, the healing on Handed Justice. Handed Justice, it gives either ability, power, and attack damage, or it gives healing based on your attacks and spells. Uh, oh man, this Velkaz is absolutely destroying me. As long as I can kill the... I need some sort of backline access. Maybe Viego can like steal a kill in the back or something. I, I don't know because he is an assassin, so he does jump to the back. Oh no, we're not able to win out here. Dang. So we are 43 life. Not a good sign because we were at 80 before and it's getting a little close. We get a locket. Locket's not that good late game, so that kind of sucks. So I'm thinking we go level 9. I could replace Karma and someone else and put in Mystics and that's probably going to be our team. All right, so I'm going to level to 9 now. And we don't have two Mystics yet, so we'll roll a little bit. Uh, so nothing there. We'll just drop Lux in, whatever. Okay, so as long as we s snipe his Kale... Uh, I still need to move my Yasuo to the bottom right so that his Velkos doesn't get as nasty ultimate like he has been doing every game. Oh, he kind of missed this game. Maybe this is the game we can win on. Uh, okay, Teemo got a great Shroom off. But, okay, looking good. But we have like a 5v1. Oh my god. Dude, Kale is just way too strong. Look at that. How much health does Kale have? She has 48 health, so we lost by 48 health. <laughs> I think we just lose because, like, he had a horrible Velkaz ultimate and we still were not able to win. Maybe if we get Mystic in, we are not able to. We just really need Mystic because he's just all magic damage. Um, I moved my Yasuo to the bottom right though, so that's fine there. Uh, let's see if we can do it this time. Kindred's ultimate is so strong, it's actually so nasty. It just makes your whole team around her invulnerable. And when you have a hyper carry like Kale, there's just no reason not to do that. Oh my god, dude, she just does way too much damage. And I lose with by one life. 
unlucky there. If we had Mystics, I think we could have won, but not close enough. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you guys next time.